A 30 Moment with Chuck Bloor. Footprints left in the sands of time cannot be made while sitting on your butt. And who wants to leave butt prints in the sands of time? A 30 Moment. Allison Steele, The Nightbird, WNEW-FM, 102.7 on your dial, Metro Media Stereo in New York. It's the new groove, and we're in it together until 6 o'clock. The Vanilla Fudge and Sly and the Family Stone at the West Bay Music Fair, March 1st, two shows, 7 and again at 10.30. The tickets are priced at 4 55 50 and 6 50 double dynamite at the West Bay Music Fair. Get your tickets. The Incredible String Band. Acting much too well and procrastinating. By the end of the 60s, most major metropolitan areas had at least one FM progressive station. But truth be told, most top 40 programmers didn't take these free form FM types very seriously. They were perceived then as wild eyed, hippie, progressive, drug, sex. Uh, right out of, uh, you know, Easy Rider. Bob Henneberry. We didn't think that they were a fad. You know, it was a estranged group of people. This is WBCN, and we're in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Charles Laquadera. Here's a guy I think you're going to be hearing about uh, in the future. His name is Towns Van Zandt, if you don't already know about him. Listen close. He's got some good lyrics, and he's got some nice sounds, and his head's in a pretty place. WMMR at the time had started the Marconi experiment. Andy Denmark. It was one single show, and I think WBCN in Boston, I read later, did the same thing. It was just the nights were progressive, and the rest of the station was, was classical. It was eclectic and esoteric, and its fans were loyal. But as the 60s became the 70s, some radio execs began to think that progressive radio could become a mass appeal format if it were given some structure, and if it played the hits. One of the earliest attempts was made by ABC, and true to the spirit of the times, they called it the love format. You're listening, You're listening to love. 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 Brother John, love. 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 and love. Howard Smith. Love. 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 Continuing love. involvement. Love. Continuous love. music. Well, good. <laughs> Good times, bad times. Led Zeppelin. Let's hear another cut from the uh, from the new Bob Dylan album, Nashville Skyline. The song is called. With you. Bob Dylan. They say he's a new Bob Dylan. Simpler, happier, closer to the good earth. The feeling is contagious. This is the radio called Love. Brother John, with you. The love format lasted about a year. Then in late 1970, ABC's Alan Shaw and Bob Henneberry, with the help of some youngsters, including Dwight Douglas and Lee Abrams, launched a new FM programming initiative called Rockin' Stereo. 102.5 WDBE Pittsburgh with the Steve Miller Band, Brave New World, title track from that album. Good morning, I'm Joe Fenn on Rockin' Stereo, WDBE. <laughs> On KLOS, this is Marshall saying goodbye, and uh, here's Cat Stevens with uh, Changes 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoops. That sounds live, doesn't it? <laughs> A little feedback there. Still coming on. Ah, this is WPLJ New York. This is Zach. And to keep it going here on WPLJ New York, the band... PLJ, when they were, you know, in the, in the launch, devastated. WNEW FM, like KLOS and KMET. KOLS kill KMET. But because FM listenership was still small, the money was still on AM. In San Diego, former KGB programmer Buzz Bennett took over KCBQ and aimed his guns at Bill Drake. 30 seconds to the new Q. 20 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
one thousand times. Hi, this is Glenn Campbell, and here's Chuck Browning on the new Q. KCBQ. Six o'clock, San Diego. Let's win this one for the Gipper. Shotgun talk. It's me, baby. That's the end of the Rich Brother Robert Show for Wednesday night. I'm gonna wanna get out of here and let Lenny Mitchell come in here. I want you to remember that you can watch for the location of the Q Cash truck and rip off all kinds of bread. It could happen at any second. Also, stand by for instant rip-offs of David Cassidy tickets and Lord knows what else. See you tomorrow. Bye. This is Buzz Bennett speaking. The new Q is controlled by you. KCBQ. KCBQ. Keeps on trucking. All right, this is Peter May, and I'm right next to the Q Cash truck, and right now I have our Q Cash winner to the tune of $400. It's Mickey Torres. Mickey, this is 40. And what they did was they took the Drake format and just opened it up a little bit more. Steve Rivers. And made it a little more hip than, uh, than what Drake was doing. To communicate is the beginning of understanding. Sign KCBQ. And just when you thought it couldn't get any bigger, a new KCBQ program director, Jack McCoy, changed the face of contesting. Building up right now, in hidden vaults and secluded warehouses all over the world, a treasure so vast it would take millions of dollars to even begin to assemble it. If you think something big is on its way to San Diego, maybe you're right. The last... Contest. I think KCBQ was, was a fantastic radio station when Jack McCoy was there as a the program director. And th that's where they first ran the last contest, which today, uh, if you listen to those promos, they're, they're still chilling to listen to just because they're so good. We'll now take you for a ride in prize package 158. As unbelievable as it may sound, prize package number 158 is a brand new 1972 Flaming Fire Red 246 GT Pinaferina Dino Ferrari. Thoroughbred racehorse, a machine that simply wants to run.